Și ne întoarcem, doamnelor și domnilor, la Kiev, acolo unde acum scurtă vreme au sunat din nou alarmele antiaerene. Mergem în direct la colega noastră, Ana Maria Roman. Ana, bine te-am regăsit. Iată, alarmă din nou la Kiev. Am văzut analiștii internaționali vorbeau despre o reorganizare de trupe pe de o parte. Totuși, atacurile aeriene continuă și acum în capitala Ucrainei, drept dovadă această alarmă. Așa este, Sergiu, am auzit alarma în urmă cu câteva momente, de mai puține ori în ultimele zile este adevărat. Atacurile aeriene însă pot fi lansate și de pe teritoriul Belarusului și din Rusia. De exemplu, în sudul Ucrainei sunt lansate din peninsula Crimea, catare nu au legătură cu retragerea trupelor din nord-est și nord-vestul Chievului. Urmează așadar să vedem ce se va întâmpla. De obicei, alarma se dă pe întreg teritoriul Ucrainei în momentul în care autoritățile de la Kiev detectează ceva. Urmează să urmărim un material, Sergiu, un interviu pe care l-am realizat cu fostul președinte al Ucrainei, Petro Poroshenko. Aș vrea să menționez că interviul l-am înregistrat în urmă cu câteva zile, înainte ca autoritățile să descopere ororile de la Bucea. Tocmai fusese eliberate aceste zone, Irpin Bucea, iar Petro Poroshenko ne dădea această vese, pentru că fostul președinte coordonează un departament de apărare teritorială civilă. Susține că a invitat mai mulți oficiali la Kiev, președintele Parlamentului European, Roberta Metzola, ar fi venit la invitația lui Petro Poroshenko în capitala Ucrainei și îi face o invitație și președintele lui României, Claus Ioanis, pentru a veni aici la Kiev să-și arate sprijinul și susținerea față de ucraineni. Haideți să-l urmărim! Russian troops have no motivation. Mm -hmm. The Russian soldiers do not understand what they are doing here. And Russian soldiers is divided by two. Part of them is uh, unprepared children who wants back home. And part of them is uh, war criminals who attacking and fight with the uh, women, with the uh, children with the elderly people. I don't know, there is a word, maroder, maroder, which is grabbing, wrapping uh, civilian population. And this is the reason of the great humanitarian catastrophe, which we have here, just maybe 15 kilometers from here, in Bucha, in Gostomil, in Irpeni, in Vorzil. This is the small towns which is completely erased. Everyone here in your headquarters is prepared yeah. for battle. Yeah. And we have no illusion. We are ready for this and we understand that this is the Ukraine responsibility for the security of the whole mm -hmm. West. Our responsibility for security in Bucharest, in Yasa, in Suchava, throughout the Romania, throughout the Europe, throughout the world. So you fight for European security, Definitely for the yes. Western security? Yeah. My request is very simple. If we are fighting for you, not only for freedom and democracy, mm -hmm. But with freedom for the security, please help us to do your job. Because if you do not do it here in Ukrainian territory, the Putin will go to your home, to your houses. And under any circumstances, Putin will knock in your door and you will fight on your land. Because this is the transformation of Putin which happening during the last 15 maybe years. Because when I met him in the 2004-2005, that was a cynical but uh, rational person. Mm -hmm. uh, very negative but predictable. Predictable. Yeah. Now, this is completely different person because they are, they are crazy maniac but and completely unpredictable. Then it was he was rational. Today, uh -huh. completely irrational, and nobody can see what Putin do very next day. What do you think happened with Putin? I think this is the results of the all, all uh, leaders of the authoritarian regime, if they uh, stay in power for 20 years uh -huh. uh, or for 25 years. The reason why it's happening, this is quite often happening with a North Korean dictator, with the, some other dictator in Turkmenistan, 
with uh, Lukashenko, with the, uh, by the way, with the Nikolai Ceausescu, who was many years, exactly these things happening with Putin. But this is not the relationship with their own people. This is the relationship with the world, because he considered himself not as a leader of the state, not as a superpower. He considered some in the middle between God and emperor. And that's why he think that he can have a right to kill Ukrainian. For what reason? Very simple. It's impossible to find out a compromise between Ukraine and, uh, between Ukraine and Russia because they won't have all of us dead. But we want to live. This is very simple. Our children want to live. Our ladies want to live. Our parents want to live. And he want to kill us. Next time he want to kill you. And we want to have a state, Ukraine, the state with a thousand years history. And he want to erase our state from the, from the world map. If you're asking me what is the current symbol of genocide, I can call, tell it that this is a Mariupol. Because people are killing just because they are Ukrainian. No matter if they are Russian speaking, I doubt that everybody understand, but Mariupol is the most Russian speaking city in Ukraine. 85% of Ukrainian speaks of uh, Mariupol speaks Russian. 100 children were killed just in Mariupol. They said that the people dying because of they don't have anything to eat. They have nothing to drink. And if that is not a genocide, what is the genocide? The whole world understand he is a war criminal responsible for the crimes against humanity and definitely he should be behind the bars after the decision of the criminal court in Hague.